superstar Democratic Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett of Texas was recently on the popular Breakfast Club podcast in which she was a strident defender of Democrats' policies and achievements, while also candidly tackling other issues like her beef with Marjorie Taylor Greene and her own party's messaging weaknesses. It was honestly one of the most refreshing and entertaining conversations I've seen involving an elected official. And for those of you who vote Democrat and are in dire need of hope and hype and inspiration, look no further. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. All right, folks, I have several clips to play here. Um, all of them are from this one episode of The Breakfast Club. It's about 46 minutes long. Obviously, we're not going to go through the whole thing, but you should definitely check it out if you haven't yet. Jasmine Crockett is one of the best freshman Democrats we have, one of the best Democrats, period. I hope she's going to be part of the generation which takes over the Democratic Party because we need her fierceness, her tenacity, her candor, her bluntness. I think it's going to resonate with a gazillion people across the United States. So with that in mind, we're going to play these clips and unpack them together. Or for instance, uh, one of the great bills that most people haven't really zoned in on that the Democrats as well as the president signed into law was the Infrastructure Act. So we have all saw we all saw what happened in Flint, Michigan. We mm -hmm. all know what happened. We also know what happened down in Jackson, Mississippi with their water. Mm -hmm. So this administration, the Biden-Harris administration said, listen, what we're going to do is make sure we start addressing environmental injustice issues, whether it's the air, the water, or the soil, because it's literally killing people every single day that look like us. And so what can, they've can done I is- Can say something real yeah. quick? Go ahead. What you said just now is absolutely true. I understood what you said. But how come Democrats can't say, Flint, we're going to fix the dirty water? Flint, we're going to make sure y'all got clean water. Flint, we made sure y'all got clean water. This bill makes sure y'all got now, clean now water. Now, I, I agree with that. They're mm -hmm. they not doing that. But it, it is a combination of things, right? Mm -hmm. So the presidential administration, they got to do their part. But mm -hmm. also congressional. Mm -hmm. So when I show up, like, I've delivered millions of dollars to my community. My community is a majority ma majority minority district. So mm -hmm. almost 80% of my district is black or brown. And so what I've done is we got the big fake chicks. We call all the media. <laughs> Listen, we do. Like, keep it simple. I mean, seriously, you got to keep it simple, right? <clears throat> I bring my EPA administrator out and I say, y'all are getting this money because of this bill and because of the president and the vice president. And I tell them, and, and we're doing amazing things but the thing is, we as members, we also have to carry some of that water because it's only so many places that the president and the vice president can get to. Right. Right. So it is a team effort. I just don't know that like we all get on the same page. I, I don't know. Very obviously, we don't all get on the same page, but that's what I'm saying. I love that. She understands the importance of messaging very directly, very simply to the vast majority of Americans who are not as obsessed with politics as I am. They have you know, careers and family and children and friends and everything and other hobbies, and so they want to know the top line stuff. What did my vote mean? What did you do for me, and why should I vote for you again? Make it simple. Put it on a bumper sticker, right? So she gets that the way that Nancy Pelosi and I think even President Biden and others of that generation generation simply don't, right? They say you campaign in pro poetry and you govern in prose. Well, you should throw some poetry in with the governance as well because that's what resonates with people. And so in this other clip, she also addresses again the messaging problem, but with respect to President Biden specifically. You about this. Trump was amazing at propaganda. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we got the stimulus checks, they were delayed because he said I want put to put my, my I want to put my signature on it. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Trump wasn't the one that said, hey, this is what we need to do for the people. It was the Democratic House, the Democratic Senate that passed the legislation. He didn't even initiate it. He just signed it into law. Right. But he was like, this is a good opportunity. The problem is that it's exactly what you just said. Like, we need a president that's going to go around and brag on himself. He needs to be bragging about the fact he and his VP who graduated from an HBCU needs to be bragging about the fact that they actually have given more money to HBCUs than Trump ever did. But you know what Trump did? He sat back. He took a picture with all the HBCU presidents. presidents right. So everybody's like, oh, Trump gave. Nope, 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 nope. Let's let's be real about this. This actually was the result of a bill that was signed into law by a Republican, by a Bush. 
And ultimately, this was a reauthorization. In the reauthorization, he actually wanted to zero out the HBCUs. But a black woman out of North Carolina, my colleague, Alma, she said, oh, this is not what we going to do. And so she fought for it. She was able to get the money back in. So once he signed it back into law, he was like, well, let's take a picture. Like, we have to do some of the gimmicky things, the things that will allow people to see and visualize. 100% correct. I know a lot of people disagree with this. I understand that there's you have to do it carefully because some people say, listen, if the your constituents feel a certain way and you try to tell them it's a different type of way, you run the risk of alienating them. You run the risk of lecturing them. I understand that. But one thing Donald Trump understands is that you can't just simply react to the messaging setting. You have to dictate the terms of the messaging war. Trump always is on the offensive in that respect. And listen, political messaging is effective. That's why politicians do it. Perception is reality. And you can indeed reshape the perception of millions of people by persuading them, right? So this idea that facts speak for themselves, we've talked about this before. Democrats seem to think that. Well, we have the facts on our side, so the facts will speak for themselves. We do have the facts on our side, but the facts don't speak for themselves. They never have and they never, never will. Jasmine Crockett gets that, and I love that she brings that energy. So in this next one, she talks about the contrast coming up in this 2024 presidential election. But back to the president, we have two options. We have one person that, hey, a lot of people say isn't perfect. And this is what we do in this country is we are always searching for perfection, whether it's in our preacher at church or whether mm -hmm. it's in our president. And the reality is that none of us is perfect. I promise you, while I believe that my district loves me, there are some people that definitely don't agree with me mm -hmm. on certain things. That's just what it is in life. We don't agree with our spouses on everything in life. Right. And so. We don't necessarily have to agree with this president on everything. But let me tell you something. He at least is not a danger. My concern is the fact that Trump is an actual threat and danger to us, whether it's our democracy. This is somebody that sat back and said on day one, I'm going to be a dictator. Do we not understand what it means to have a dictatorship mm. like in this country, in the land of the free? And let's talk about like when we really look at his homies on the Republican side, we've seen the dysfunction in the right. Republican House. We've seen what they want to do. All they have is chaos. And so until somebody comes at me and tells me, hey, this is a policy issue that Trump is trying to bring forward, he ain't brought no policies to the table. He won't even debate because he knows that he doesn't have a stance. The only thing that he's trying to do is make sure he can stay out of prison. And listen, I, I can appreciate the hustle. I can Right. But the reality is that we have always been subjected to the prison system in this country right. and he should not be above the law. And that's the only. Again, 100 percent. I love how she lays out the terms very starkly, um, you know, and I should, I should say this. This logic applies regardless of who the Democratic nominee is. It will almost certainly be President Biden. I understand that there are compelling polling about President Biden's chances. You know, we're 11 months out. It's a snapshot in time. Things can change. But this logic applies no matter who the Democratic nominee is. There will never be a perfect Democratic nominee. There won't. We will disagree at some point with them on some matter, perhaps even a substantive matter of policy. But at the end of the day, we exist in a duopoly. And you will have a choice in 2024 effectively between a Democratic nominee and the Republican nominee who is almost certainly going to be Donald Trump. And if you're an honest, thoughtful person, there is no calculus, none, in which Trump comes out ahead. He is stupider. <laughs> he is less accomplished. Um, he is much more dangerous to our democratic norms and institutions, to the health of this country. The Democratic candidate will be on paper superior. It doesn't matter if it's Joe Biden. It doesn't matter if it's Marianne Williamson. It doesn't matter if it's Cenk Uger, if he's somehow able to pull that off. So I love how she lays out the terms very starkly here and reminds everybody of what Donald Trump's actual motivations are. He doesn't care about governing this country. He doesn't want to be you know, president. I think he actually enjoys being sad with the responsibility, even though he did everything in his power to shirk it in his first term. He just wants to stay out of jail. And so in this last clip, um, Jasmine Crockett addresses her beef with her fellow Republican congresspeople, which she hinted at in the clip before. 
that's where you get your housing vouchers from. But why Democrats so, don't fight for this publicly though? Like, well, like, I don't like, know. like we can't, y'all can't just I fight in Congress. Like you have. To, I mean, I guess it's not sexy. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> why. I don't know. But it is, I'm because it looks like Democrats are always just laying down and rolling over and letting Republicans just run all over them. That's I, why I get it. That's why you go viral when you call the GOP out and call them a bunch of mm. asshole yeah. Republicans, which yeah. you did. Yeah. Why did you do that? Because they are. What you mean? <laughs> I know, but what was the specific thing that made you, that, I mean, that, that, that triggered you that day and said, nah, I'm tired of this shit? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, when I sit there, the oversight committee is where all the drama is. This is where the impeachment inquiry is. And, you know, it's insulting that we have idiots like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, um, Paul Gosar, uh, Jim Jordan. I mean, you just name all of the nonsense Republicans and they sit on this committee and they sit there so high and mighty and they talk noise constantly. And they're like, oh, the Biden crime family. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Have you met the Trumps? Like, mm-hmm. I, like, who is it that's in court every single day or every other day with something, whether it's the fraudulent businesses that he's run or whether it's his criminal issues on the state level, on mm-hmm. the federal level, and you're trying to make something out of nothing? Is this what we're doing? Is it so- nothing on me, honey? Did- so listen, phenomenal stuff. Um, you should definitely check out the entire conversation there. But listen, I love, again, the tenacity, the fierceness. We see her in congressional appearances or congressional hearings all the time. I think that the Democratic Party would be wise to put Jasmine Crockett and Jared Moskovitz and others front and center as much as possible, the way we've done with AOC, because these are the firebrands. These are the people with the wit and the charisma and the rhetorical prowess and the debating ability to actually articulate the achievements and the aspirations of the Biden administration and the Democratic Party in general. And as we head into the 2024 election, that connection with the constituents is more important now than ever. Let me know what you think in the comments.